you know, there's so many ways employers dominate and exploit our lives as working people. They take the majority of the profits that our work creates. We're dependent on them for benefits like health insurance. If you're in a non-union workplace or even if you're in a unionized workplace, you know, our employers may bully us and treat us like dirt. But I think one of the most fundamental things employers exploit is our time. And especially in America, we work too damn much. By dominating our time, capitalism dominates and determines our social life, our ability to spend time with loved ones, and our ability to develop all our capacities and talents to the fullest extent. But there are some encouraging signs that at least in some parts of the world, the four-day work week could become reality soon. In Iceland, the uh, Reykjavik City Council, one of their major trade union confederations and the national government ran a series of trials as a four-day working week between uh, 2015 and 2019. And this is the largest experiment ever done in shortening working hours without cutting pay. And over 2,500 workers in the public sector, and that's over 1% of the country's entire working population, took part in the study. And the results were a resounding success. Workers reported feeling less stressed and burnt out. They had better health. They had more time to spend with their loved ones. Even productivity improves, if that's something that you care about. The Icelandic Association for Sustainability and Democracy released a report outlining the results of the trial. And I want to highlight a lot of the feedback from the worker participants. Let's start with how a shorter work week improved the weekends. I think we've all experienced this where during the week we're too busy to take care of basic tasks and errands. So over the weekend, instead of relaxing, uh, we're doing more work. Instead of reading our favorite book, playing basketball, watching weekends, we're grocery shopping, we're mowing the lawn, we're cleaning the house and things like that. So the study concluded in interviews, both males and females said that it was easier to do various errands around the home, such as shopping, cleaning and tidying during weekdays rather than during weekends as a result of shorter hours. One participant expressed everything at home we couldn't finish during the weekdays we had to do during the weekends. And as a result, the weekends were of less quality. Many participants indicated that being able to do these tasks on weekdays improved their lives considerably as they can now spend more time with the family and with their partner. A shortened work week also helped balance out the um, often gender, di gender division of labor in the home, citing stress was commonly reduced in the home after reducing working hours. This seems to be a result of a partner, often male, being able to assist more in the home, making it easier for the other to attend to other duties or take some, si some time to do something personal, but also because people simply had more hours to devote to the family. Grandparents were happier as well. Um, this is from one grandparent that participated in the study. We have often just gone home, played some games, and just now we were talking about going to a coffee shop together. I wouldn't be able to see my grandchildren if not for the shorter hours. This is wonderful. In short, the results were not ambiguous at all. The four-day work week was a win for workers across the board. Um, the study concluded saying, across both trials, many workers expressed that after starting to work fewer hours, they felt better, more energized, and less stressed, resulting in them having more energy for other activities, such as exercise, friends, and hobbies. This then had a positive effect on their work. This really should not be surprising at all. We all know how we feel when we get a vacation, when we get some time to step away from work. We know that human beings were not meant to spend over 40 hours a week in a cubicle or a warehouse or in a truck doing the same thing over and over. Some of us who were lucky got a little taste of a shortened work day during COVID. And I was one of them as my school operated on a shortened virtual schedule that ran from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And to be clear, my experience was definitely not universal among most teachers in this country but I immediately felt improvements in my life from this change. I slept two more hours every day. I had time to exercise and eat healthier. I could literally feel the difference in tension in my back and in my neck. I could pursue other interests more like writing for Jackman. Um, and my partner can confirm that our relationship greatly benefited from this. We had more quality time as a couple. Instead of me being tired all the time, I could put more into the relationship. So shortening the work day and the working week should be firmly on the agenda for the left and the labor movement in the United States. Let's talk about how to get there. And this is where we can also learn a lot from what happened in Iceland. This trial wasn't just a random good idea from the government. It was a product of Iceland's robust and powerful trade union movement. So Iceland's union density is 90%. 
Yes, I said 90%, meaning 90% of Iceland's working population are in unions. To put that in perspective, union density in this country is 11%. So unions in Iceland have an incredibly powerful role in civil society. These unions had already been negotiating contracts with reductions in the work week that covered many workers. This, combined with their lobbying efforts, pressured the government to conduct this trial and consider implementing uh, shorter working hours across the board. So generally, the countries where work, people work less have stronger unions and a social democratic tradition. In the United States, labor will have to play a key role in getting this on the agenda. The only reason the eight-hour workday is considered standard now is because labor unions fought like hell for it in the past. And of course, it wasn't always this way. In the early days of industrial capitalism, it was quite normal for workers, including young children, to be working 12 or even 14 hours a day. It took massive strikes just to get a 10-hour workday. A general strike in Philadelphia in 1835 had kicked off a wave of strikes across the country that made the 10-hour day more standard. And here's a scene from that strike in Philadelphia. Irish workers on the Schuylkill River coal wharves first took the initiative and walked off the job in May of 1835. 300 workers paraded throughout the city, threatening any potential scabs with a sword. As usually happens with mass strikes, things escalated quicker than ever, even those participating thought possible. Soon, every union was out in solidarity, including painters, coal heavers, printers, masons, and city employees. Fife and drum corps were formed to parade down the streets with banners reading from six to six, 10 hours work and two hours for meals. At that time, 10 hours of work was considered a luxury. And we've already had Richard Wolf on this show to explain this whole history, but May Day or International Workers' Day comes from the struggle for eight hour work day in 1886 in the United States, even now in this country, we celebrate it less than most other countries. The fight over time has always been central in the fight between capital and labor. Employers want every second of our time devoted to them making profits, while we are trying to claw every bit of our time back for ourselves. And the fight over time plays out in different ways. The amount of break time, the number of sick days and vacation days, the amount of paid family leave, these are all things unions fight with the employer over. And this issue we be, will become more central as we deal with the effects of automation and possibly an employment crisis. A rational society would use automation to spread work around more evenly and reduce all of our working hours. The only way to use automation to our benefit will be to shorten the workday for everyone without loss of pay and employ more people in the process. There's many different ways you can describe socialism. But ultimately, what we're talking about is allowing all of us to have more fulfilling and enriching humane lives. The fight for a shorter work day and work week is key to realizing that. And this issue has altered the trajectory of my own life. I'm a public school teacher and my father was a public school teacher. And I know everyone talks about our summer breaks as teachers, but this is just something that should be standard for all workers. My father is from Barbados. And because he was a teacher and had that time off, Every summer since before I can remember, we went and I lived with our family in Barbados for the whole summer until school started back again. Without that opportunity, I would have never built such strong ties with my family and with another culture. It gave me the chance to connect with an important part of my history. Those experiences shaped who I am and made my life so much richer and my perspective so much broader. And it all comes back to this freedom from work. And this is something all workers should have. So Nando, you know, when are we going to write this petition to uh, Jacobin? The uh... honestly, uh, you know, I'm I'm about to uh, storm the barricades after that segment. You know, uh, this is, uh, you know, I, I I think about like I remember this was like a hugely formative thing in my in my life was when France passed the 35 hour work week uh, law, which was. I don't know. I don't even know when it was. Like it was a while ago. Yeah. Um, and I remember like just talking to people when that when that happened because everyone was like it became kind of like a meme to make fun of them. It's like, oh, look at these French. They surrendered in World War II and now they don't want to work. And you know, um, like, kind of like lazy French Pierre, so that he could you know sit around and eat his brie cheese and a baguette or whatever. Right. Um, Sounds good. And I'm like, dude, that sounds fucking great like i don't know right. why you guys are, why you guys are making fun of them like we should like we'd be so lucky to to be able to work less um 
and it's it's like you mentioned like this automation um all the autom all, all the automation we have like you'd think uh we could work less um because machines can do a lot of the work for us but but it's it's created the exact opposite in which we have to work a lot more and, like we right. work more than we have in 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 decades um which just makes no sense right and you know and this is something i wish it was framed better during the last presidential election. And this is not, I'm not just trying to take a cheap shot at Andrew Yang, but where I was frustrated was I was glad he was bringing up automation. I think more people should have, I think even Bernie should have talked about it more, but I think a better solution is saying, let's cut the work day or, or you know, work week significantly, spread the work around. I think to me, that's a more appealing solution than UBI, which, you know, can be used in different ways by conservatives for, for bad ends. Um, but I think that it really is the only way to deal with automation and we automation is coming. I mean, we know it's coming. It's very hard to stop. Um, this is the way to deal with it. Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's remarkable what they, what they did in Iceland. Um, you know, and, uh, it's just, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, you can think of like so many benefits beyond, you know, the, the, the immediate obvious ones, but just, the idea of a, of a three day weekend, um, you know, I, I've seen studies that show that like the two days, you don't have enough time to disconnect in the two days. Like right. by the time you've disconnected, you're already like dreading, you know, you got the Sunday scaries, you know, right. As yeah. they say, um, and uh, a three, you know, like, so when we have one of those three day weekends, you're like, oh, my God, like you can really actually take some time for yourself, like without just having to, you know, you have enough time to unwind and then enough time to like prep for the you know oncoming dread of 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 the work week uh right so yeah man i mean i i i've always said like uh, it's amazing are... even just going you know if you've anyone's taken trip to europe i mean i was in berlin a few years ago some bar and it's just amazing how many people i met from different countries in europe and everyone was like oh yeah i'm on my like month vacation or I'm on my two-month yeah. holiday that's just normal you know and you know that's how they they get to travel and and do the things they want to do yeah and it's 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 crazy because like you know in america we think of ourselves um individually as consumers um and we don't think of ourselves as you know workers in a collective but you're starting to see like all kinds of funny stories about you know for example like the hamptons now um it's it's so it's so inexpensive to it's so it's so expensive to live there um that they're having like a huge worker crunch like all these rich people who live in the hamptons like can't find workers to like clean their houses and 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 right. you know serve them cocktails at the bar or whatever um because like it, it, it's like these are the kind of things like these are the kind of contradictions that emerge um with this kind of thing you know uh as as we kind of squeeze more and more people um in, in you know through the system um but like this this automation thing this idea that that, that you know we have all these machines that can do a bunch of stuff yet will work longer like that that contradiction is very right is, is like a it's a hard one for people to wrap around uh, wrap their minds around right and i think just one more thing on this what's also interesting because even you know a lot of unionized members i mean one benefit is like you'll get overtime pay if you work overtime and you know in a lot of sectors workers really work a lot of overtime and i think part of that comes back to because our lives are so expensive so it's like okay you might be making 70 80 thousand a year that's pretty good but if you're thinking about two kids to college it's like yeah you probably should nothing, get as many overtime yeah. Yeah, hours yeah. as you can so i mean that's also a challenge is that even unionized workers still feel that crunch to have to try to get overtime because i think a lot of it comes back to just our total lack of a, a social safety net <laughs>